Hello. It is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome to my New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so a little bit of hopefully pleasing challenge as we get into this midweek puzzle. But first, we have a fairly in-depth response to one of yesterday's clues and answers. This is uh, in regard to um, the notion of crying uncle uh, in order to surrender. And Andrew Wilson, I, I, I had said on the solve that I wasn't sure where what the source of that phrase was, what is its etymology, and I was wondering if anyone knew. And Andrew Wilson, in fact, says, as a devoted amateur linguist, I can tell you that we don't actually know the origin of crying uncle in English. Some people point to a similar concept in Latin, patruo mi patrissim, my most honored uncle, essentially saying that the bully had control of one just short of their own father. It's unlikely that this is a direct translation, as the tendency is to maintain Latin phrases as is, such as tempus fugit carpe diem and caveat emptor, due to Latin being the language of scholarship. It's hard to imagine some child, remarkably well-educated in the classics, translating the concept to English on the fly. More likely is that the underlying concepts are equivalent. In a patriarchal clan, tribe, or house, the brothers of one's father would have had as much or more influence over a child's life as their father. So by calling someone uncle, the child is saying, you're the boss. It's also possible it originates with the Irish word for protection, anacol, but that has been largely dismissed in the scholarship. All right. So that, uh, I suppose, makes sense. It's certainly true that many cultures, the world over, um, the uncle is a specific and respected sort of figure, sometimes not even a member of the family necessarily, um, biologically, I mean. But we don't necessarily know. We do not know. Just one of those things, I suppose. Okay, well, with that, let's get going with the Wednesday puzzle. Uh, oops. This puzzle is by Alex Fratsanos, edited as always by Will Shorts. And we can see actually right off the bat behind the gauzy privacy veil that we've got this big Z glyph in the middle of the puzzle. And that is, um, I suspect, indicative of a theme. Uh, so let's get going. One thing it's worth mentioning is that I don't think I've I've mentioned this on the on the uh, solve before, but generally speaking, and there are exceptions to this, but the over I would say ninety nine percent of the time, um, a crossword in the new I think this is this is generally true with crosswords. It is certainly true with the New York Times crossword. The grid is rotationally symmetric, and what that means is if you flipped this grid one hundred and eighty degrees, not mirror didn't mirror it vertically, but rotated it, um, it would be identical. And you can see that even though the grid is not vertically symmetrical, in other words, um, the this, uh, how do I put this? This square here, where my, where my cursor is that's selected right now, if this were vertically symmetrical, it would be black to match this other one down here. It's not, it's rotationally symmetrical. And that's, and that's often, um, so, so you can see that the Z fulfills that. It fulfills that rotational symmetry. Anyway, I won't keep going into that. That's just a little thing that tends to be true about the New York Times crossword. So let's get going. All-time leading scorer for the Lakers familiarly. Well, it's my bane, sports clues. I don't know. Modern day horse and buggy users. This is probably the Amish. Um, a... Uh, a religious community in some rural parts of the United States that shun electricity and other modern conveniences, or I think like, I think they don't use electricity. Um, they certainly don't use most modern conveniences, and they do use horses and buggies, and they actually take them on public roads. It's very interesting. Bird with a reduplicative name. So this will be uh, the same. This will be the same syllable twice. It could be dodo. Um, I think there are a number of other birds that could fit this probably. Uh, let's look. Blue state. Could be something about the Democratic Party. Could mean, could be, uh, could not be, 
I was, I was thinking it wasn't democratic because of the, the, um, sort of set, part of, part of speech that's being referenced here. And I tested it just in case and it wasn't. <laughs> Let's move on for now. To speechify, uh, this could mean to orate as in oration, which suggests this bird clue could well be dodo. Partner of confused could be dazed. There's a Z. I bet we're going to be getting some kind of Z-related theme here with this, or Z for the for the Brits. Um, partner of confused, dazed and confused. And I think we might as well fill in dodo. This clue number minus D. So what this is saying is 13 minus 2, which is the French, uh, D, which is the French for 2. And the answer to that would be 11, which in French is 11. And look at that, another Z or Z. Action after a bad golf drive. I don't know. I'm going to guess it is re-T. I've never actually heard this before, and I'm not familiar with that vocabulary. But uh, but I certainly am not a complete idiot who's never heard of a golf T. And re-Ting seems like a thing you would do. Let's look at this. Large unit of resistance. Um, this is probably an electrical unit, but it could be resistance in a broader sense. Let's go back and look at some of these crosses here. Um, blank American. All American, I suppose. That's not impressing me is a general sentiment of meh. Response to who wants some? I do. I want a crossword. Law and order spinoff for short. Um, CSI, a law and order spinoff, but that's obviously not correct. Uh, SVU, SVU, Special Victims Unit, I think. Bucks and Bulls. Bucks and Bulls are male, uh, the male varieties of their species. So they are he's. Um, so we've got some quite long answers here, actually. I didn't really point that out, but we've got some, some grid spanning acrosses, not, not downs, but acrosses. Um, old pro. Well, this looks like veteran, and all of the Z's going on make me think this is a grizzled veteran. Cold War initials. Not sure offhand. Hybrid citrus fruits. I'm not sure, but this will probably be easy once we have some crosses and we can see the two fruits that probably make this one up. Native American canoe material. We'll probably get there. Columnist Klein, Ezra Klein is a columnist. Uh, blue state. This could be blue as in um, dejected, sad. I mean, maybe it is dejected. No, it's not. Although that J creates jazz there, which makes me think raucous music similar to Boogie Woogie. Well, now jazz would fit in there. Interesting. So what is this blue state? Um, well, this looks like house, this word here. Yeah, what is that? Interesting. Let's look at this. Passions. Um, passions could be zeals. You have a, a zeal. You're passionate. Um, big dance organization. Big dance. Something tells me this is somehow going to be a sports thing even though I do not know what the big dance is. I bet this is going to be a sports thing, which makes me think this is NCAA, the um, collegiate, collegiate sports organization. I'm not confident about that at all because I've never heard of the big dance, but I, I bet that's what that's going to be. But maybe not. Don't make me eat that. Could be something like ick or ooh. Like some insensitive remarks for short. For short is interesting, so it's some kind of abbreviation or acronym. Bolivian capital. Now, you'd think this would be a capital city, but I bet it's going... Oh, no, no, it is the capital, La Paz. Sorry. I was going to say this was going to be a misdirection about money, but I suspect it's actually not. And, and look at this. We've got, uh, we've got a Z in this unchecked square. And when I say unchecked square, what I mean is we have to know this is correct without the benefit of being able to cross it, to check it against other uh, downs. And there's another one here, and I bet that's gonna be Z as well, um, to fit the theme. Spaces out could be zones out. So there you go. 
info on a dating profile would be age. I think I think something about dating sites or apps was one of the things that's tripped me up the most on this channel to date. I don't remember what it was. To give a pointer. Now, could a pointer be a dog in this case? Not sure. Overhead cost of manufacturing with a question mark. So this could be, um, I suspect, the overhead, the the way that they that that you would sort of instinctively take this would be an overhead cost. Um, in other words, a sort of uh, ongoing running cost of doing business. But I suspect it's going to be more literal because there's some sort of pun going on. Uh, encompassed by. Around, amidst, let's keep going for now. A drunkard, well, with three letters, a drunkard could be a sot. Oh, I am a complete idiot. Good Lord. This isn't dejected. I, I fell prey to the exact thing I said I was falling prey to before, which was incorrect part of speech. I was dejected would be a an adjective, whereas... What this is looking for is dejection, which is the state of being dejected. It's a noun, not an adjective, and you always have to make sure to match the part of speech in the clue. So that was one I could have gotten much earlier and um, somehow just did not, didn't pay enough attention. Um, a large unit of resistance. So, okay, this is a word with which I'm not familiar, but... I, a unit of resistance with which I am familiar is the ohm, and based on the sort of scientific nature of this thing, I'm wondering if we can simply put the tera prefix in front of this, as in terabyte, as a unit of computer storage, to make a tera ohm. That I've never heard of that, but it, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it were real. And then we see here that got an A plus on is aced. If you got an A plus on something, you aced it. Hopefully, we will ace this crossword. Bundle up. Uh, oops, I was going to say swaddle, but that must not be it because that doesn't fit. Uh, let's look here. Fanciful ideas. Um, I don't know. I mean, Tara Ohm could be wrong. Seminal punk band with the would be the Ramones. Potato blank appetizer. Potato chips or skins. Now, this is a plural, so this probably starts with S. So let's go with potato skins. Encompassed by, I mean, it could be amidst. Overhead cost of manufacturing. Aha, here we go. So yes, it is It is a pun in which overhead means literally overhead. And this is smog. In other words, a byproduct of a manufacturing plant. An overhead cost. This is a, smog is a cost to society as a result of manufacturing, essentially. Um, give a pointer, uh, this could be poke. I mean, I was overcomplicating it a bit, but maybe just give someone a point, poke at them. Um, 50s campaign button name, this would be Ike, uh, nickname of Dwight D. Eisenhower, who had buttons and stickers that said, I like Ike, encompassed by, so it is in fact amidst. A lowest, the lowest ranking GI, I think this refers to very low ranking, a uh, very low military rank, which would be a private PVT. And we know that we know that it's going to be an acronym or abbreviation because we see G dot I dot in there. Available to watch in a way. Um, could be on video. Zin, it's been released to home video. If something becomes rusted, it corrodes. Oops, what am I doing? Blank du jour, bistro special, probably the soup du jour. In other words, the soup of the day. Like some insensitive remarks for short. You know, I'm honestly still not sure what that is. Although, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm now doubtful of this soup. In fact, I was slightly already skeptical of it because, and I should have said this, I thought maybe it would be the whole, I thought maybe the whole answer would be in French because, I mean, it's tough because soup du jour is 
a loan phrase in English and, and soup we, we use an English word rather than, I guess there'd be an E on the end if it were French soup. Um, but I did think maybe, maybe it is a French answer still. And I think maybe it is in fact, because when I look at native American canoe material, I think maybe it ends with bark, which would be an A. And you could imagine this being plat du jour, plate of the day, but the French plat for plate. I still don't know what this, like some insensitive remarks for short is. And plot could be wrong because that does look tricky. But let's look at this cross here. Super hoppy craft brew. Okay, well, this probably is a tea because this is probably triple IPA, a triple India pale ale, a uh, variety of beer where the hops, the which um, impart the bitter element of the beer are extremely forward and present. Animal whose name consists of the two post of the postal codes of two states it passes in its migration. That's that's interesting. That'll be clever when we see what it is, which I'm not going to poke at right this second. Who said, the only difference between me and the Surrealists is that I am a Surrealist? Uh, surely this is Salvador Dali, the Surrealist painter. Blank day, down under holiday. So down under indicates we are concerned with Australia. And this, I suspect, is Anzac Day which um, celebrates the armed forces of Australia and New Zealand, as you can see, and maybe Commonwealth as well uh, for the sea in there. Uh, there's Anzac biscuits, which are little, little biscuits, little cookies that they have as well. Anyway, that's what that is. Animal whose, animal whose name consists of the postal codes of two states it passes in its migration. All right, so these, these are U.S. states, and that CA is California... Um, I mean, probably it'll, it will be a bird, an animal that's able of capable of migrating that far. I mean, at least two states away probably is a bird, but I don't know what that bird is offhand. So let's look at some crosses here. Construction vehicle informally, a dozer, a bulldozer. And there we go. Look at that. We're building up on this theme. Studied up on, if one studied up on something, one boned up on it. You two front man is very similar to that, which is Bono. Ah, and then, ah, it was not a bird at all. An orca, an animal whose name consists of the postal codes of two states it passes in its migration. And we've got Oregon and California. Those are both coastal states. And so, in fact, the animal is in the sea. Very interesting. Okay, let's look around. Um, bundle up, not sure offhand. Speckled coat. I think this might be a repeat from yesterday. I think this might be a roan, the horse coloring that came up yesterday. Let's look at the crosses and see. Knapsack. Now, there's a question mark here, and either one of these words could mean something else. I mean, it's playing on knapsack, the um, bag that is spelled with a silent K at the beginning, and so either nap or sack or both of them is being used in a punny way. But anyway, let's move on for now. Island west northwest of Molokai. This is probably Maui, I think. I hope my geography is not um, tripping me up there. Bit of sweet talk. Oh, I guess it's not. Oh, it's not. It's Oahu. Sorry. Oahu and bit of sweet talk is ku. Knapsack. I mean, could it be caught? That was my first thought, but a caught isn't really a sack. But the reason I thought caught was because you take a nap on a cot. It's a, it's a type of sort of a mattressy, little sort of sub-bed mattress. Uh, but I guess it is cot because to bundle up is to swathe something, to swath, swathe. And fanciful ideas are whims. If you do something on a whim, it's sort of a fanciful idea. Make easier to recite as the Great Lakes via homes. So um, when you see this MN at the beginning of the word, there's very few words that start with MN. There are some, but very few. And one of them is mnemonic, but this says make, which is what, uh, and a mnemonic is um, what is being described here when you sort of create uh, an acrostic or something to help you remember a series of, of words. But what this is saying is make easier to recite. It's a verb. So what is the verb form of mnemonic? What is it? called when you make something a mnemonic, when you what it. I actually don't know. I'm having a little brain freeze there. But we know it'll be something around mnemonic. Vodka cocktail with cranberry and grapefruit juice. 
I don't know. Um, it's not a cocktail I myself consume on a regular basis, if ever. Cranberry and yeah, I don't know what that is. A wild guess is a stab. You take a stab at something. You take a wild guess. A globe. Globe is an example of an orb, spherical shape. Wall Street credential. Um, this is probably MBA, Master's in Business Administration, postgraduate degree. Could also be a CPA, a Certified Professional Accountant. Um, but it's probably MBA because we've got this mnemonic with an M in there. So, um, God, could it be C breeze? I mean, that just looks like two words that fit. I don't, I mean, it seems incredibly plausible. And once again, got a Z. Uh, well, if something is well kept, it's neat. So we're certainly off to the races here with this mnemonic. Blank reader. All right. This is uh, a little bit obscure to depending on your cultural context, but this is probably the, uh, the Utni Reader, which is a pub long running publication in Germany. Uh, to take by force is to usurp. It costs about twice as much if it's round. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna feel dumb when I see whatever this, has, this is because it'll be clever. Uh, a British meat pie is a pasty, Cornish pasty, for instance. Um, European Peak is an Alp, the mountain range, the Alps. Actress Vardalos, Nia Vardalos. It's worth noting that Nia is a name that comes up in the crossword a lot for obvious reasons. It's a short word, and it's easy to fit in among, amongst other words because it consists of common letters and is primarily vowels. Some NFL linemen, uh, bleh, probably a something back. I feel as though that's what... <laughs> that's what NFL players are all, always a something back. Let's see. No, that's wrong. Incorrect. Completely incorrect. Because a dish with tomatoes and mozzarella is a Neapolitan pizza. So shows what I know about sports. I shouldn't even try. Ah, okay. Well, then here we got this mnemonic. The verb version of that is to uh, mnemonize, I suppose. I mean, that makes sense. That's you could sort of infer that, I suppose, but I but I didn't want to. Um, but, but, but it can be tipped or collect tips. A vat, I suppose. I mean, you could tip a vat over. The titular Nelsons of a classic sitcom. Ah, it's not a vat. Uh, it's a hat. But anyway, let's do this first. Ozzy and Harriet. Um, a show I've never seen before, but have heard of. I have heard the names Ozzy and Harriet, and they fit in this answer. So that's what, that's what this is. A nest protest. It could be a peep if you imagine a bird in a nest making a sound out of protest or any other for any other reason, I suppose. It costs twice as uh, it costs about twice as much of its round. This is clever. It's trip. A round trip consists of two legs. You're outbound in your return. So therefore it would cost roughly twice as much, although usually it costs significantly less than twice as much. Uh, and then restaurant water choice, tap water. Tap water or bottled water is often an option at a restaurant. And then let's just quickly glance back at this this answer that we missed. It can be tipped or collect tips. And I, that's quite clever. In other words, a hat, you can either tip your hat at somebody or you could hold your hat out, hat in hand to uh, solicit tips. So that's what that is. All right. Could this be barrel house jazz? I don't know. Um, don't make me eat that. Could be ug or ick. I still don't know what this like some insensitive remarks is. State or in, in Tornado Alley abbreviation. This will be a U.S. state, probably in the Midwest, where they get a lot of tornadoes as um, immortalized in The Wizard of Oz, which is Kansas. I, I mean, that was, the, that was the state in The Wizard of Oz. Could it be that? K makes this look really tough. So I'm guessing not. Um, so this canoe material, could this be bark here? State in Tornado Alley. What state ends with B? Could be Nebraska. I do not know what this is. Oh, unPC, unpolitically correct. Like some insensitive remarks for short. That's what this is. Don't make me eat that. All right, it is UG. Hybrid citrus fruits. Um, Something jellos, obviously. Crangelos, is that a thing? Birch bark. Ah, yes, birch bark is the Native American canoe material. Probably could have guessed that earlier, but didn't. 
this big dance organization, it must be NCAA. That must be what this is. Orangelos, <laughs> orange tangelos, whatever. I think a tangelo itself is already a, a hybrid of something, maybe, and maybe not. All time leader for the score for the Lakers, familiar, familiarly, familiarly. Wow, I'm losing my mind. Familiarly. <laughs> familiarly. There we go. Familiarly is what this is. It could be Kobe, right? Kobe Bryant, that must be it. Or Angelos, and then Cold War initials, as ah, KGB, the um, Soviet intelligence services. Uh, this music style was, in fact, barrel house jazz. And there's the puzzle. There we go. I think that was a really fun Wednesday puzzle. Uh, I really liked it. This um, central theme with this little... So this is interesting. The, one of the reasons you don't see unchecked boxes in a New York Times crossword is because there's no way, I mean, it's the clues in the name, there's no way to check it against the crosses, and therefore you're sort of going out on a limb. Now, that's extremely common in British crosswords, both British general knowledge and British cryptic crosswords. You, they're unchecked, un unchecked squares all over the entire grid. I mean, it seems like a, about a third of the squares in the grid are unchecked. Very, very uncommon in the New York Times crossword. And, and, but they're not, and yet because of the theme, they're not entirely unchecked because we have this absolutely enormous clue that's, um, tipping its hat in the direction of, uh, of, of what this letter is likely to be. And then we've got this, these, uh, Z's all throughout the rest of the puzzle. Grizzled veteran, barrel house jazz, Neapolitan pizza. And in fact, they're all doubled up to sort of match with the two, the pair that we've got in the center of the grid. Um, in fact, are there even any single, well, I suppose the down, all of the down answers that cross these have single, single Zs, single Zs, but the, the acrosses are all, they're all the double Z. So uh, really well constructed, Alex uh, Vretzanos. I enjoyed it a lot. Good, um, I actually found, for whatever reason, I think I, I had, a bit more trouble actually with yesterday's puzzle on a Tuesday. And as I always say, these puzzles, the difficulty is so variable from person to person and even the same person day to day. You really never know. Um, but I had a great time with this puzzle. I hope you did as well. If you took a stab at it, I hope you enjoyed it yourself and hope you solved it. Um, maybe with a bit of help, maybe not. And if you have been enjoying this series, why not subscribe? The subscribe link is underneath the video and also is either on the screen now or will be on the screen shortly, along with a link to my coffee page where you can toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks to help me keep this series going and to make it sustainable in the long term, which is something I'm really hoping that I can, uh, that I can do to an extent that will make this series stick around. Um, I really appreciate everybody who has contributed so far. It is incredibly meaningful to me. I'm aware, especially these days, not everyone's in a position to do that. So if you are, it means a lot to me. And with that, I will take my leave for the day. I'll be back tomorrow for a Thursday puzzle, which is always, as I've said before, that's the day I think, all right, this is getting, we're getting a little trickier. So brace yourselves for that. I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, take care.